If you, if we were to look at ourselves through the lens of an experiment, like we would an animal experiment, we think that animal is sick. If you saw an animal digging in the corner, looking, 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 looking for a bone, the dog is looking, 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 you'd think that's really sad. That we often hear that, you know, that social media is getting dopamine hit after dopamine hit. When we first get on social media after a long, for the first time or after a long period of time, the amount of dopamine that's released we think is quite substantial. It's novel. Remember, dopamine is about novelty, surprise, and the sense that we are on some exciting track. That's what dopamine is really about. It puts us into states of readiness, anticipation, looking, seeking, etc. almost always for things outside the confines of our skin. The thing about cell phones is when you first get on there and you have, let's say, you're, it, no Wi-Fi on the flight or something, and you land, it can actually be quite stimulating. You get a lot of dopamine. Oh, there's this. Oh, there's that. But very quickly, when you're scrolling on social media, you're no longer getting the novelty, but you're continuing to do it. And you almost don't know why you're doing it. At that point, it shifts over to something that's a bit more like an obsessive compulsive behavior, where the, we can define an obsessive compulsive behavior, where the obsession leads to a compulsion. So the obsession is a thought, the compulsion is a behavior, but the acting out of the compulsion merely serves to increase the obsession, right? This is very different than being obsessed with food or obsessed with cleanliness. There's no payoff. Right, exactly. There's no anxiety relief by carrying out the compulsion. With OCD behaviors, like scrolling social media, the dopamine quickly wanes and then you find that you're just sort of, and we've all been there, you're scrolling, you're like, why am I doing this? This isn't that interesting. That is, this isn't that interesting. Now, the algorithms for social media are very clever and I don't want to demonize it. I, you know, provide a lot of, a lot of my life is spent on, you know, on social media now, but in the algorithms that they've incorporated function on the, the most powerful way to keep people doing a behavior or an animal for that matter is intermittent random reward a random intermittent reward that you don't know when you're going to hit the jackpot. So you're scrolling, you're scrolling, and then you see something. Typically it's very high what, you know, in nerd speak, we'd say signal to noise. So if you're reading some interesting things, this came out in the news, this came out, and then it's all of a sudden a riot or a person that is jump is base jumping off a building or, um, you know, for people that are, are scrolling, looking at bodies or something like that, uh, live bodies. Uh, hopefully people aren't looking at the dead bodies, but look, if something's very tragic, then that has this gravitational pull. And then you, what happens is you start getting the system working for that next dopamine hit that you don't know when it's going to come. It's just like gambling. So I look at social media as initially being very dopaminergic, driving reward, surprise and excitement, but very quickly transitioning to something more like OCD and the kinds of behaviors where it looks, if you, if we were to look at ourselves through the lens of an experiment, like we would an animal experiment, we think that animal is sick. If you saw an animal digging in the corner, looking, 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 looking for a bone, the dog is looking, 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 you'd think that's really sad. That's us, right? That's us. I'm pointing at myself intentionally. That's us. So we have to learn to self-regulate the amount of time, but that doesn't have to be a process of, you know, scruffing ourselves and saying, don't do it. Don't do it. Think about it in terms of the positive, the more time away from something, the more positively reinforcing it will be when you return. And that just to sort of superimpose this onto the relationship conversation, you know, many of us are fortunate to have partners that we love spending a lot of time with. It's also good to miss that person every once in a while. Now that might be an hour for some people apart of no communication. It might be a week. Everyone varies on this, on the spectrum, but the idea of missing someone is that positive anticipation, that kind of pain, right? It's a motivational state. And then when you see them, it's all the richer. So you can imagine that the dopamine circuits can be used to more successfully navigate a number of different things. And, you know, a lot of couples completely quash the excitement and the pleasure of being together, not just physical pleasure, but just pleasure of being together because they just spend too much damn time too much together. familiarity. Or they're texting all the time, right? Or, you know, and, and this whole thing around texting has become a really interesting test of dopamine expectation. There's this thing called dopamine reward prediction error. If you think the reward is coming, and it doesn't, you drop below baseline levels of dopamine. That's why you should never tell someone that this restaurant's gonna be the best restaurant you've ever been to in your life. Exactly, I made the mistake of telling my girlfriend on the way here, I want her to read this book. I'm like, this is an amazing book, you should read it. And I caught myself and I thought, damn it, I'm actually detracting from how good she's going to experience the book as. Tell her it was terrible. 
Oh yeah, it's it's really good though. This is the problem. It's <laughs> it's hard to do. So um, I think the key is to uh, to leverage dopamine reward prediction error in the best way. It's the surprise that you know if you take kids you're driving home from school and suddenly you pull into the ice cream shop, they're going to be so ecstatic. But if you tell them you're going to go to the ice cream shop and it's closed huge drop below baseline. Does that mean if you tell them that you're going to the ice cream shop and it's open, that's less than not telling them that you're going to the ice cream shop and it's surprise? Correct. It's, it's, it, they literally tear out into maxim, surprise is the maximum dopamine release, then successful completion of the mission, so, <laughs> as it were, is the next and then unsuccessful.